It's the coach, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Coming up, the big man, Derrick Henry, fresh off a big game a week ago, as it'll be the Tennessee Titans as they get set to match up against the Indianapolis Colts. I'll be back with you again with scores around the league at halftime. But kickoff right around the corner. And standing by to call the action, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, thanks, Coach. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. Just a short time ago, smoke from the pyrotechnics filled the dome as the Colts made their way out of the locker room. We're set for football as the Colts get set to match up with the Tennessee Titans. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, we take a look at the Colts entering play. And they've lost three straight here, and it goes without saying, I guess, they could certainly use a win. And how do they get a win? Because they've lost three straight, I think it's paramount that they get a fast, clean start to this game. Meanwhile, for the visiting Titans, they come in off a loss last time out, but they've been playing better than 500 ball the last couple months. Five wins in their last eight games. The NFL season has hit high gear, and off we go in Week 11 on EA Sports. Now Campanero. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. They'll be led out by their enigmatic quarterback, the Heisman winner from Baylor. It's Robert Griffin III. And no excitement unless, he, unless you're on the defensive team of last week in his numbers because the only excitement he really generated was the one interception he threw. Yeah, no touchdown passes. Yeah, and his team wasn't real thrilled about that. And they lost the game. So I know this week has been tough on him because he's been working hard. Fundamentals, footwork, finding the right targets. And bottom line, how do they get a win? The seventh play now of this opening drive. This is third and long, though. From the gun, it's Griffin. Buying time to his left. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Jabal Sheard. He's the one to get him, and that's sack number seven for him on the year. Well, they went with the nickel. They throw in an extra defensive back. Coverage was very good. Yeah, it was exactly as you would expect. A passing down. You bring in the nickel package. Just as you described, the coverage was excellent and allowed one of their linemen to end up getting to the quarterback. A lot of people think the coaching staff really gets on them and that's how they motivate them. Most of these guys are self-motivated. They have a lot of pride in their performance. Now Lump, and he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off by Logan Ryan. And he's going to get this on down to the 13-yard line. That interception sets them up beautifully already in the red zone. And you can hear it all the way up here. Oski, Oski, everyone turn to block, find a spot. And now they're set up inside the red zone for their offense. The Titan offense now working their way back onto the field and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not pump the ball again. Now a handoff to Henry. A couple yards shy of the end zone. It's a good gain of 11, sets him up first and goal. And that's a run that'll energize an offensive line. They'll take that one all day long. Fundamental breakdown by the defense. You've got to be able to make plays on the edge.
They come out here in the eye. Trying to punch it in with Henry. And he pushes forward but comes up short of the goal line as he'll get a yard down to about the one. So a we'll look here at the key inactives, and we got this list before the game down on the field. And they tell us the same thing every time, don't they? Next man up. No excuses. Be ready to play. That's the mantra of every organization. The key is having guys on the roster who are capable of filling in and playing at a high level. That's when you know you've drafted well, scouted free agents well, and stocked your team just the way you're supposed to. They'll give it to him up the middle. They're held again, and do we have a goal line stand brewing? It's third and goal. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. This Colts D up to the challenge so far, but they need another stop here on third and goal. Griffin. And that is incomplete. Brandon, some of those windows that throw the football that exist when you're between the 20s, they don't exist when you're this close to the goal line. But as a former DB, I liked it closer to the goal line. Tighter windows made it easier to cover people, actually. will put this one right through and the Titans hit the scoreboard first it's three to nothing they took it all the way to the one but in the end opt for three just doesn't sound right does it if you get all the way down to the one yard line isn't that supposed to be a play in the end zone that culminates in a touchdown for your team <laughs> and per usual it felt like the guys on the sideline wanted to go ahead and go for it of course they did but of course head coach it defers back to him, and he made the decision. Let's get three out of this, make sure we get some points. I guess as the wheels are turning on that other sideline, as a play caller, you're filing that away right now, aren't you? Yeah, you're trying to find that opportunity later on when you can play action them or stick something to them between the second and the third level. Throwing on third down, lock. Throw left side complete. That's Doyle. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A big third down conversion with a gain of 28. As far as I'm concerned, Andrew Luck can do it all. I mean, he's an underrated runner, toughness in the pocket, strong and stout. But let's face it, the money, that comes from his arm. And smart, valedictorian of his high school class in Houston. Then he goes to Stanford. He's got it all. a second and two after that last catch good for eight yards now it's luck off the bootleg under a heavy rush and down he goes brian arakpo in there to drop him for his fifth sack of the year Enough takes a start to have a good drive. Quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? Now, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And old Mo is a very, very fickle man. Your defense talk about three and out, right? Thought they were able to get off the field. Not so. A bad time for a roughing penalty, and they get the gift of a first and ten. Here's Luck. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off near the 29. And they are going to set up shop at the 32-yard line. Now, after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. The Titans on third down. Just one for three thus far. This is third and eight. Three, three, nine, eight. Three, nine, eight. 
from the shotgun. Griffin. Open man is Taylor. He's got it. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. A good pick up there, a 22. So just a lone field goal in this first quarter of play. 3-0 is our score. EA Sports NFL Sunday returns following this. With the former volunteer Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden. It's the Titans with the football here to begin quarter number two. And they've got it here with a first down. That hold coming from the left Still side of the line. Down. Hands got caught in the cookie jar on that one, and the flag came out. Penalty against them. Now they face a second and long following the holding penalty. Out of the gun, Griffin steps away to his left, staying on his feet, dancing to his left. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. Partner, it's often the man coverage is easier for a quarterback to run against. You get your receivers going downfield. Those guys are staying with them, and oftentimes they have their back to the quarterback, which opens up a lot of space and room, and they don't even know that he's taken off with it. What a big-time pickup on that play. Here's another first and goal, but from a little further back this time following the penalty. They go play action with Griffin. Flush to his right. And this will be caught. It's Matthews for the Tennessee touchdown. Rashard Matthews, his second touchdown on the season. And the Titans are going to add on to their lead. He was able to move around and found some vision to throw the football. And how about how he ended it? Boy, he had some zip on that throw. Yeah, it doesn't hurt to have an arm like that. Results in the touchdown here. Great play offensively. Ryan Suckup on for the point after. Extra point put through by Suckup, and the lead grows to 10 0. A 10-play drive that time, and it ends with a Tennessee score. Get down for him. So second in inches after that first down completion went just shy of the marker. Again is Lock. And he's going to find Doyle in the end zone for a cold score. Jack Doyle, his fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Colts have got it back to a one score game. Yeah, he is a reliable target. They like to get him involved. They got him involved there for the score. And they should. He's a very good player. Remember, they can use him in certain positions, so many different spots, and he usually comes through for them. Now Adam Vinatieri for the point after. Vinatieri able to tack on the PAT, and that'll cut it to three at 10-7. So that drive goes eight plays, and the result for the Colts... Here's a touchdown. Station post, because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. And now it's first and 10. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. The throw is RG3, and it's intercepted at the goal line. Picked off with great anticipation. 
anticipation. And his guys have got it back at the closing stages of the first half. Brandon, this is why golfers do their best to never count a score in their head before the ball goes in the cup. This looked like a slam dunk for points on this drive, didn't it? Instead, they throw an interception, and they're going to come away empty. And the Colts getting ready to go. And the ball backed way up. So thinking with this amount of time on the clock, probably just sit on it, and we'll see these two teams go to the lockers. Yeah, I don't think you want to overthink it in this situation. Either side of the ball. Just go ahead and finish up the half and get on out and talk about it. Now the fourth-year man from Texas A&M, Kristen Michael. They'll try to get forward, but he's going to be stopped in his tracks at about the three. Benny Logan in there on the tackle. The rush defense stout on first down. Here's second and ten from the 20. So we reach halftime here with the visiting Titans taking the lead into intermission. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Things starting to get interesting in this final weekend before Thanksgiving. So let's see what's going on around the NFL. We'll begin things with a trip to our nation's capital. Houston in town to take on Washington. And in the second quarter, it's the Redskins who are out in front. Alex Smith with three touchdown passes. From there, we head over to the Windy City. Check on the Bears at home, Soldier Field. And they have the lead in that one over the visiting Minnesota Vikings. Mitchell Trubisky has thrown a touchdown pass there. Finally, let's get you to Baltimore. Check on the Ravens at home at M&T Bank Stadium. And they've got the lead in their ball game over the visiting Cincinnati Bengals. Two touchdown passes there for Lamar Jackson. Meanwhile, in our game, it's been a defensive struggle. Which offense can break through in the second half? To find out, let's hand it over to our broadcast team of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Thank you, sir. A field goal separates these two teams as we come back for this second half. Play call was for him. They were looking good on second down, but now they're backed up five yards by the false start, and it's second and eight. Luck. To the right side to Eric Ebron. He'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. A good pick up there, 26 yards. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. And Vinatieri's kick is good. And that will knot us up at 10. So he missed that field goal earlier, but he says not this time. Able to knock it through, give his guys three. I like his poise. I like his confidence, his belief in himself. Sometimes when you miss that first one, you see a lot of guys sag and they can't make the next one. Not in this case, stepped right up like a pro. And they won't be able to run another play. Time has expired on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Indianapolis. All even as we get ready to start the fourth. 
you there maybe to pin him back. Andrew Luck and company heading back onto the field. So, Charles, there are the numbers. What's happened here? Defensive adjustments that's caused him to sort of fall off a bit? I think so. That has to happen. You've got to make some changes because in the first half, they were pretty effective. But the second part is sometimes when you're doing really well, you get off your game a little bit. You get off the gas a little. You're like, okay, we've got this thing. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked by Kevin Byard. So how about that for a momentum switch? We're in the fourth quarter and it's a tie game. You've got to take care of the football here. Now their opportunity to take the lead right out the window and everything is flipped in the other direction. And we spotlight Derrick Henry now. He is fully awake now if he didn't get off to the start that he normally does. They've got his attention. He's running it well. You think they set off the alarm clock at the half? You think that's what went down? I know this. Having played on the defensive side of the ball, if you do it... From the 32 now, here's first and 10. They go play action here on first down. He's going to float this one deep. And that's caught inside the 35. And they're going to have this all the way down deep into Tennessee territory. Well, even after all those interceptions, he's not deterred, still confident to go deep at work there. I think all the old rules about playing that position still apply. If things go wrong, you still act like you're the best player out on the field. You still carry that supreme arrogance with you and continue to fire the ball. I've seen guys have games like this, and this is where you find out if you're great or not. Can you overcome some interceptions and still lead your team to victory? A field goal could get him the lead, but it might not be enough here as they come up on first and goal. Luck now to throw. And he just throws this one away. Smart decision here this close to the end zone, and it brings up second down. I hope I don't sound too rah-rah on that one, but that's the exact right throw. Either your receiver gets it or no one gets it. Give him a lot of credit for being really precise with it. Got rid of it. No one got it. They'll try again here from the seven on second and goal. Off of play action, Luck. And this is going to be caught? No, they say it's incomplete. And a flag comes in as that one falls incomplete. Well, let's see who this is on. So that one will be accepted. A big play to start the drive got him in this position, but this defense has held firm since, and now it's third and goal. Now it's long. And it's caught. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. A four-yard pickup, not enough. Fourth down. All right. Field goal gets you the lead here. I mean, but I might want to just go ahead and go for something big. Oh, come on. You got to kick it. I mean, you got to be glad I'm not the head coach here, right? The whole team would want to revolt at this point. So here comes the trusty battle-tested Adam Vinatieri for a big kick. This to break our fourth quarter time. And Vinatieri's kick is good. And they will take the lead at 13 to 10. A good drive gets him inside the five, but they could not punch it in. And credit the defense, too. Make sure that that happens because that was the old bend but don't break approach. Make sure they contained them when they absolutely had to and force the field goal attempt that went through. The Titans on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. This will be third and a mile. Operating from the gun, Griffin. He's going to air it out deeper. He's got a man complete. And he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. Give him 35 yards there on the third down conversion. 
You know I'm going to lean towards the defender, right? You know I'm going to do that. I know. That's a tough situation for him as I see it. But the truth of the matter is, that ball was not streaking towards him. Had a little arc on it. He's got to find a way to get his head around to make the play on the football. So the Titans in possession of the football here as we get your reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. On first and 10, it's Griffin being chased out left. He will find Davis on the left side complete. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Never a good sign here as Robert Griffin is down following the play. We'll check on his status when we get back. pick up there it'll be second and eight I like the call there because that was one to take time off the clock and get them closer to getting out of here with a W in the mind of the play caller all you want to hear is tick 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 he's back to throw flushed out right and he is out of bounds right around the 10-yard line. Nowhere to go downfield, but he's able to get out of bounds and stop the clock here with a first down. Late in the game, defense trying to avoid a big play. He's able to work out of the passing game, turn it into a run, pick up the first, and stop the clock as well. And you know in this situation, everything is sped up. The intensity, the thinking, everyone's movements. But for a quarterback, he has to continue to be what we call a flatliner. Level in everything he does and read the clock Feel it in the pocket and go at the appropriate time. Only way to get the lead here, of course, with a touchdown. And that's what they're gunning for on first and goal. Back to throw. Buying time to his left. And oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Picked off inside the 10. And a great return as he's up close to the 40-yard line. I think that interception happened for two reasons. Quarterback gets outside the pocket and panics a little bit. And receiver doesn't make sure he's absolutely in an open spot. So there's a guy lurking, took the ball from him. Yeah, so don't wave your arms, right, as a receiver if you're not wide open? Got to know that you're open. Otherwise, just don't do it. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. They have the three-point lead. Defense did their job. Now, late game. Although it looks good, you know the coaches, they haven't counted this as a victory yet. I agree with you totally. Big applause for the defense, but no one has taken their headset off on the sidelines. They don't believe this game is over. The offense has to close this one out by taking care of the football. They'll try to close it out now. Second and nine, and you'd have to figure just about all 11 probably crashing the line here. Staying on the ground with Mack. And he takes this up right near the 45-yard line. Illegal block in the back. Offense.
They keep it on the ground. Mack again. And unable to get downhill there as he'll take this up to about the 37. Now the Titans will use their third and final timeout as they get it with under a minute to go now in the football game. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath and now they're back out and ready. The Colts in victory formation now as they take the knee. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he's on to punt for the first time this afternoon. Fair catch taken just inside the 40-yard line. It'll be called just a 22-yard punt, certainly not what he wanted. And control of the football, switching hands here with very little time remaining in this contest. Robert Griffin III now gears up to lead this offense again. This is something we've seen many times over the course of his career. Can he pull off another fourth quarter comeback? And it's very strange, isn't it? Because when it's a player of this magnitude, even though the guys on defense have the lead and are sitting in the best spot, they're maybe the most nervous people in the stadium because they've seen this happen to too many people before, too many teams. They've got to find a way to shut him down. Here we go again for the grizzled vet. And, and the connection ball. not there. Offense. Incomplete. Just 14 seconds down to the final couple of plays here. Tip there, altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. Well, these corners, I tell you, they've done excellent work all game long. They remind me of guys in the past who just said, hey, throw it out here 100 times. Nothing good is going to happen. And if you throw it in the wrong place, I'll take it the other way. He'll look to throw, eluding the pressure right. And he's going to lose a yard or two, taken down behind the line. saw a close game that kept us on the edge of our seats down to that final whistle and right before that final whistle defense with one last exclamation mark there getting the sack to end it. I love how you phrased it because we were waiting to see what would happen obviously we thought something would happen downfield instead it happens in the offensive backfield and that's your ball game. So for the Colts, it's a rare victory for them as they get that record back to 3-7. and seven. And they'll have another home date next week as the Miami Dolphins come to town. Meanwhile, for Tennessee, it's a bit of a setback as they drop to 6-4 and four now. And they'll look to regroup next week as they head to Houston to take on the Texans. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Alongside Charles Davis, we thank our entire crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. This is the NFL on EA Sports.